Sunlu sent me a bunch of their engineering filaments to review, so I decided to run them all through my tensile tester and see how close I can get to their data sheets for the tensile strength of their materials. I printed these little test strips on the H2D on the external spool. I will post the model and the print profile in the description. These were intentionally designed to be one millimeter by one millimeter in the skinny portion of the part. That gives it a cross section of one millimeter. This is convenient to convert the units that were given in the data sheet to the reading that we see on the tensile gauge. We're provided with MPAs or megapascals, mega being the prefix for one million and pascals just being a one Newton force over a one meter squared area. If we're pulling in Newtons with the tensile gauge, that means that one Newton over one millimeter squared. And in order to convert that into pascals, we just have to multiply by a million because we have a thousand millimeters in one meter. So a thousand times a thousand, which is a million. So we go from one Newton over a millimeter squared to a million Newtons over one meter squared, which is just one megapascal. Super convenient. That means that whatever we see in Newtons on this gauge is essentially what we've got in megapascals. So let's take a look at how some of these filaments did on the tensile gauge. I'm not going to talk numbers here at the beginning. We're just going to take a look at how these samples broke. Here's the easy PA, which was very ductile and stretched a lot before breaking. It actually stretched past the limits of my tensile gauge. I had to unclip it and then tie it back down so that it would actually snap and I would get the full reading out of it. The carbon fiber and the glass filled filaments had a very similar break. Very brittle, very abrupt. That's the PA6 carbon fiber, PA6 glass filled and the PA12 carbon fiber. Forty-three point nine, and that's very close to the data sheets. Forty, when we adjust for the actual cross section, we get down to thirty-nine point five on average across the ten samples that we did. Now that we have our first round of tests out of the way, we can take a look at the data from the tables. So let's just take a look at PA six glass filled as an example, and I'll zoom out here back to a hundred. Before doing every test, I would measure both sides so that I could get the actual measured area, and then I could adjust my peak pull measurement divided by the area to get the final MPA. So all of the measurements are an adjusted value from the actual test sample, because I can't trust that they are actually one millimeter. I need to measure and adjust those measurements based on what the actual sample dimensions are. So here are our final adjusted values, and then here is the average of those 10 samples. So for PA6 glass filled, we end up with 83.01. So that's how all of these data points came to be. So we can go back to our main table here, and we're gonna look at just the initial test results. So easy PA before annealing, 57.08 is what came from the data sheet. We ended up at 52.11, which looks pretty close. I'm pretty happy with that. PA6 carbon fiber, they don't post a pre-annealing value, they just post 170 MPA. We are very far from that value at an average of 94.08 across those samples. Glass filled posts 120, we were only at 83. PA12 carbon fiber is 100, we were pretty close at 94.56. And the PCABS posts a 40, and we got 39.5 across our measurements. That's pretty dang close if you ask me. Now I've mentioned the word annealing a couple times. Annealing is the process of bringing the plastic up to a temperature below its melting point for a certain amount of time. And they have recommended values on the Sunlu website, which is what I followed. And we can see from their posted data that for the easy PA, we can go from a 57 to a 74.29. So for the PA6 and the PA12 samples, I did eight hours at 110 degrees on the print bed of the H2D. And there is no timeout feature on the H2D if anyone was wondering, which is a really nice thing to see. And I also had the chamber at 65 degrees Celsius. For the easy PA, they posted 110 degrees for one hour. So that's what we did. And here are results for the annealed test samples. The easy PA followed the data sheet pretty closely. We went from 
52.11 to 76.61. So our average was actually slightly above the stated data sheet for the annealing values. The PA6 carbon fiber is still a long way from that 170 value that we're searching for. And the PA6 glass filled also 91.21 is short of the 120. The PA12 had a very marginal increase from 94.56 to 95.81. These were the percentage increases we saw. So we saw the substantial increase on the EZPA 47.01 but then we didn't see a huge improvement over the PA6 samples and the PA12 sample. Now you can see that we're still chasing those numbers from the data sheet, the, especially the 120 and 170 from the PA6. I'm pretty happy with the PA12 results and the easy PA. Those are relatively in range. I was reading that the PA filament strength can change over time as they absorb moisture from the air, and you can accelerate this process by putting them in a hot water bath. So I put the PA6 samples in their own respective bowls and I dumped some boiling water on them. And after 15 minutes, I replaced the water and then let them soak for another 15 minutes. And then I let them air dry until they were completely dry. And then we're going to take a look at some of the results from those samples. Well, here are the annealed samples. And then here were the annealed followed by the water bath samples. And you can see there is actually a substantial drop in the tensile strength of the samples. We went from 100.42 to 49.27 and 91.21 to 51.24. In hindsight, the water may have been too warm. I was using boiling water, so just below 100 degrees Celsius, and everything I saw online said 70 degrees, and I think I was just trying to do it a little bit faster, and I may have ruined the strength properties, or I may have waterlogged the filament. If I were to do this again, I would have also measured the before and after weights of these samples to know exactly how much water had been absorbed. So we can see 49.27 was a 50.94% decrease in the tensile strength, and 51.24 was a 43.82% decrease in the tensile strength, which leaves us very far from our target of 170 and 120 respectively. But all hope is not lost. I filmed a lot of the sample pieces a week after I had actually done the official sample tests, and this is what happened. P6 carbon fiber as printed. 128.1. Wow, okay, this is really interesting. These P6 carbon fibers that I printed probably about a week ago, I did them directly off the printer and I got much lower numbers. I was getting in the uh, 100 Newton range or just above 105, 106. Now I'm getting 128 and the previous one I think was 126 which is much more in line with the data sheet. So maybe these guys need time to acclimate or adjust. I had them in these Ziploc bags. I'm not sure if these are water permeable. I don't think they are because you can fill one of these with water. This might be worth its own video exploring as printed right off the printer after a week and then doing annealing and, and those types of variables.